Now the topic of this video can be rather noisy. Let's see if we can find out. But you never thought you'd hear a moth that squeaked, did you? Now, this is what you call a moth. Probably one of the world's most famous or infamous moths. This huge hawk moth is, of course, the death said hawk moth. The most wonderfully descriptive name perhaps given to any moth. It doesn't take any explaining as to why. This moth derives the name of Death's Head Hawk Moth. But what a name to conjure up everything that a moth isn't. It's not the harbinger of death and doom that this species was at one time led to be. But in all honesty, if you found this moth, or especially the larva, it means you were going short of potatoes that year on your allotment because the larva of the desert hawk moth were traditionally found in potato fields quite often at the pupation stage actually when potatoes were being harvested and sometimes the massive pupa would be unearthed along with a few pound of king edwards and wilges but what a moth this is and thankfully now this moth, which you saw or may have seen as caterpillars a few weeks ago, is now adult, as you can see. These are huge moths. The head, from eye to eye, is probably a good seven millimetres, maybe even eight in this individual. This is a male, this one. This is the first of a number that I've got to emerge, I think. They may well have company by tomorrow morning. This one hatched sometime in the night, I think. It hatched probably around dawn, to be honest. But that marking, that marking supposed to be reminiscent of Death's Head, which I suppose it is, is quite magnificent. This is one of the easiest of moths in the world to identify. It's made famous, of course, by the film The Silence of the Lambs. But the most unique feature about these moths isn't the markings. This is a beautifully marked moth in all ways. And of course, this one is immaculate. These are enormous beasts, but they, it's not the markings that helped to make this moth unique, certainly amongst UK Lepidoptera. It's its ability to squeak. And the squeak, when I handled this moth to get it out of the cage and to try and coax it to eventually sit still on this lovely piece of wood that I got for it at great expense, it squeaks like hell. When I've had these before, I can't ever remember one squeaking as much as what this one did. This was almost a whimper, proper cry baby. But to hear a moth producing a loud, audible squeak, or series of squeaks, almost continuous, is quite amazing. So then, here we have perhaps the world's most famous moth. It's the moth everybody wants to see. And there's a few people that want to come round and gaze at this fabulous creature. This, of course, is mint. It's only had one bit of a flight, but 
The markings are just wonderful. Nature knows how to mark and dress things. It couldn't have been more keenly acute than when it designed the markings for this moth. There's something about black moths, or generally black moths, just with those hints of tans and browns and a fine dusting of grey to some of the scales. That fine dusting stops it from being properly black and dark browns. The legs, of course, are black. The thorax is black or grey. Of course, those orangey tan coloured markings representing the face of death himself. What a remarkable moth.